Hi, I'm Blythe Stevens of A Blythe Coach, dance education and coaching to move through life with balance, grace, and power. And today's video is called Chasing Chasse because we are working with the ballet movement chasse and in English that means to chase. See what I did there? Because one foot is chasing the other. Chasse is one of the most important connecting steps in ballet to prepare us for bigger jumps, also for turns and all the other showier movements. So sometimes it gets a little bit lost in the mix, but it's still very important and the way we perform chasse affects the way the entirety of the dance looks. So let's get started. Other connecting steps include pas de bourre, which also has a variety of variations, tonlié, which is very similar, which moves our weight onto a new foot, and then we have chasse. With chasse, there's two varieties, one which stays on the floor, terre à terre, so we're just sliding across the surface of the ground, and then there's also chasse en l'air, which would appear in Petit Allegro as a small jump. So chasse begins in a closed position, either third position or fifth position, and then escapes out from that position, closes briefly, and then if we're doing a string of chasses, we'll continue. The shape of chasse is formed, the pathway of chasse is formed with a sort of a U or an underside of a box shape. So it sinks down low, slides across the surface of the floor, and then either jumps to close before opening again or closes on the ground. So for example, I'll start in third position, chasse a terre would slide and close. Chasse in the air would slide, assemble the feet in the air, that's the moment like a cat and mouse game where the back leg will catch the front, and then slide again if we're going to do another one. Chasse can be formed, performed in any direction. For example, we could go from a third or a first position and plie and slide, chasse and chasse. So it could go sideways with a number of different arm positions, or it can also travel forward or backwards. So as I mentioned before, it does somewhat resemble the tonlier movement, which also descends or sinks and then rises again. But I think of the pattern of tonlier as more of a V or an angle here, angular shape, where we're starting from a tendu, going down, so our weight is on both feet, and then rising up again. Or to the side, it will go down on the diagonal, and rise up. That would be a ton lié. Chasse can either sink, slide, and change, and close, or sink, slide, jump, and close. And we want a neat, completely closed and pointed fifth position in the air, even if it's just for a split second. All the keys to good ballet jumping still apply, of course, in every case, including a nice, juicy, powerful plie to fuel the jump and give it that spring, a stretch of the leg in a specific shape in the air, and then also rolling quietly back down onto the ground, toe ball heel into another clearly delineated shape. There's another step that the Royal Academy of Dancing, or RAD, calls gallops, which is very similar to chasse. Of course, it's an English term. But as I understand it, and RAD is not my training, so correct me if I'm wrong, but as I understand it, gallops would begin from an open position already, and from here we would slide and jump, reach slide and jump. So it's a little different. I find it a little bit confusing too because sometimes we think of a gallop as more of a, like a horse movement that could be a gallop as well. But of course, different schools of ballet 
ha use slightly different terminology, but you will see variations of a chasse movement in every style, gluing and connecting steps together. So today we're gonna practice just chasse all on its own, and then we can weave it into our choreography moving forward. Thanks so much to Megumi Kopp of the West White Dance Theater for her gracious permission to use her piano music from Hawaii in my YouTube videos. This is from the ballet class, Piano Music from Hawaii Recording, which you can find on Spotify, iTunes, and everywhere that quality music is sold. And the track is called Mahalo Vau O Kanani, Medium Allegro. We could do chasse quicker as a petite allegro or slower and bigger as a grand allegro, but I think this medium tempo works well for us to practice today. Let's give it a try. Let's start in a gentle third position with chasse's to the side and then we'll come back the other way. Arms simple and low, plie, slide, jump, close, slide, jump, do close, slide, jump, and we can also try this, as I mentioned, without the jump all together. So for example, descending or sinking, sliding, and closing. Add the jump if you want. If you like, we can also chasse moving forward, as I said. Let's bring the arms in front of us for that. And then we'll try the other side, even out. Also chasse, the preparation chasse a pair for turns. Thanks for joining me to practice chasse and learn a little bit more of the theory and practice of this basic ballet movement. It is basic, but I will say for beginning dancers, it is pretty complex to slide and transfer the weight to gather the legs together and to land on them both simultaneously. These are all skills that need development. So patient with yourself, keep practicing, and I hope to see you here again for future videos. Go ahead and subscribe down below to make sure that you're kept up to date on everything that's coming out. Thanks again for joining me. See you next time.